Hi there, this is Fateh, and today we're going to be having a new tutorial on how to create a tab bar. We will see the best practices from a UX perspective on how to create a good tab bar. We will be doing some UI designs together on Figma, and last but not least, some tips on how to link and create an interactive prototype of a tab bar inside Figma. So the first part is going to be more like a theory, but believe me, it's important to keep in mind what we're going to see together for the sake of creating something that works. If you are only looking for the UI part, the Figma, use the sections below to get there. Let's dive into it. There are so many ways to describe navigation in a mobile app and how important it is, but its main purpose is to allow users to access content and features. The tab bar is also there to get them where they want to go in the app with the least amount of friction possible. We all know that a good mobile navigation will boost the usability of an entire product, when a bad navigation can just kill it, no matter how beautiful the user interface is. So what are the best practices for a mobile navigation tab bar? First of all, the placement. Tab bars have to be easy to reach. An ideal placement will be at the bottom of the screen, sometimes called the thumb zone. Most mobile users scroll and navigate apps using their thumbs. With our screens getting bigger, the top part becomes almost impossible to touch without adjusting the phone. Positioning the nav bar at the bottom makes it easier for users to interact with, while secondary items can be moved to the top. Visual Feedback The selected or active tab needs to have a different visual style that helps users understand the current location with no efforts. We usually highlight it using a different color, a filled icon, sometimes both or maybe a different style. Interaction area, or button size. The interaction area in the tab bar have to be big enough to be easily tapped. You have to make it easy for all users to avoid misclicks and eliminate frustration. The tab area should be the width of the full tab bar divided by the number of items minus some space. That space is made to make sure that users won't stress themselves out by randomly hitting elements that are nearby. Number of elements. Make sure to use between 3 to 5 top priority elements in the bottom navigation. Using more than that will overcrowd your design. The tab target will be very close to each other and, as we saw earlier, the users might end up hitting the wrong tab. Plus, any additional tab will increase the complexity of your user flow, therefore compromising the experience. Never use horizontal scrolling in a tab bar. This harms discoverability and users might easily miss important content, without mentioning that the active state might go out of sight when the users scroll the bar. If you need to put more than 5 elements, consider using a sidebar or a vertical hamburger menu. Consistency Icons used in the tab bar have to be consistently chosen. They should have a clear meaning to your users. Do not use unfamiliar or hard to read icons. This will make navigation unclear to all users. Avoid as much as possible to use icons with no labels, at least for the active elements. Users should be able to understand what exactly happens when they tap on it. Your labels should provide a short and meaningful definition of a navigation section. Do not use long text labels so they don't cut short. Never use an ellipsis or wrap a label. Accessibility Believe it or not, the most common problem when it comes to accessibility when designing a nav bar is a color contrast. The color contrast between background and foreground, especially for labels, should be great enough to ensure legibility. Poor color contrast for icons and small font size are pinpoint to intuitive user experience. Use 12 pixel size fonts with medium to bold weight as a minimum. Remember that your design is worthless if your users can't read your content. When choosing a color scheme for your design, choose foreground and background color that have good contrast. Ideally, you should aim for a triple A rating with a minimum of double A at least. You can use some plugins or websites to help you check your accessibility. I'll put some in the description below. With that being said, let's head to Figma and design some UIs. All right, let's start by gathering all the needed components. As we saw earlier, we need consistency in the icon style. So let's use Google Material Icon Design. To do so, I'm going to use the plugin Material Symbols. You can find it in the community or you can use any icon library you want. I'm going to search for home. Let's use this. I want the filled version of it too. 
let's use products. I'm going to use this one. The outline version. Let's use cart. Um, let's take this one. An equivalent in the filled one. And um, let's do profile. So user. We'll take this one. Yeah. Let's grab the online version. All right. So let's turn them into components. So create multiple components. And let's create our first element, which is the first tab, of course. So let's select this one, duplicate it. Uh, we're going to be using an inter font with medium at 12 pixels minimum as we said of course and let's create our first tab using shift a as an auto layout let's use eight as a spacing between the two elements and let's convert it into a component rename the tab of course always let's call it tab and we're going to use this component as a base to create our nav bar but before that let's assign some properties so select the icon and assign the icon property by clicking this. Let's call it icon. Assign the text property by clicking this one. Let's call it label. What this does is actually when you duplicate this, you can use the properties from the Figma panel to rename your layers. All right, so let's duplicate them four times. Let's change the icons. So this one is going to be product. This one is going to be card and this one is going to be profile. Let's rename them. So now let's create a frame to use at a base for our nav bar. Click F or choose it from here. Let's create a frame uh, of about 390 pixels to 80 pixels. It's going to be our base. I'm going to use a grid to do so. Create a layout grid here. I'm going to change the grid to columns. I'm going to use four columns with a 16 margin and eight free gutters. Perfect. Place our element inside. So don't worry about the spacing for now. We're going to use auto layout uh, to space them all. To do so, select our frame and hit Shift A. This needs to be fixed, so let's do so and put 80 pixels. This one needs to be fixed too, but we'll leave it at 390. Select our auto layout and rename it as navbar. Center it and let's do some settings. So in the auto layout panel, set a horizontal padding to 16. And the spacing to eight. So with a frame selected, hit enter to select the inside components. By the way, use enter to select the lower level and shift enter to select the upper level. Let's select them back and let's change the horizontal resizing to fill. Voila. Now let's turn our tab bar into a component. Now you need four screens for four different content to build the interactive prototype. I've prepared some UI placeholders for us to use as some sort of a style wireframes. Let's bring our nav bar here. Let's hide the grid for now. So I'm going to give you a tip. Instead of linking each element on each screen to its equivalent, let's take our master component and link the elements to the respective screens. This one is going to be home. We'll choose dissolve. This one is going to be product. This one is going to be cart. And this one is going to be profile. So in that case, you just duplicate this, put it inside. Of course, position it well and copy and paste it on each frame and that way 
all the prototypes are already linked. Let's use some shadow here to elevate the nav bar. Let's copy this tile and put it on all the nav bars. Let's hit the prototype, bring this to here and click on play. Let's test it. Here. Perfect. So let's add one more thing. On each screen, click on the current location and choose the filled state. Run the prototype again. Perfect. We have now finalized the prototype that you can present to your client or your developers. Or you can even do some user interviews with it. Of course, you need more options to conduct the interview, but you got the point. So that's gonna be all for today. We've seen together some best practices on how to design a tab bar. We created one in Figma and we turned it into an interactive prototype. I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, hit the like button, subscribe and activate the bell. It helps me a lot to continue to do what I love, sharing my knowledge. Thanks a lot for watching, stay safe, I'll see you next time.